Hi class, and uh, welcome to another short video segment that I hope can help you as you um, uh, continue to work and progress through our course. Today we're going to talk about uh, georeferencing and digitizing. And just as a reminder um, about what each of these terms mean, when we georeference, what we're doing is we're taking an image, so like a picture that's on file, and we're giving it a location. So image files typically don't have coordinates to their image. So um, for example, you could think of like an aerial image or a topo map. We're going to give it coordinates so that it knows where to sit in the map. And then to digitize is to create digital features um, of objects. So that's like creating points, lines, or polygons of things that actually represent maybe a building or a river or a road so that they have a digital footprint and can be uh, shown in a map and they know where they belong in the map. So that's kind of our goal for today as we work through this. Now I just opened up ArcGIS Pro and this is the first window that we see. You can see that I have a, a number of recent projects listed here. Um, I'm going to start a blank project and kind of build this one from scratch. And I'm going to call this one uh, geo, oops, geo ref underscore digitize ArcGIS Pro. And I'm going to call it two since, since I have one of these already. Um, and we're kind of reworking this as a class. I'm going to give it a, a file location where this can sit. And so I'm going to come into a folder that I have specifically for our class and put this in the projects folder of this class and say OK. Now this is going to create a project and again just as a reminder when it creates a project just remember there's a couple of things that are automatically created in a folder that's that it has the project's name. For example, a geodatabase is automatically created and a toolbox is automatically created. And if I were to bring just a file exploring window um, onto my screen, I could go to this very project and see a few of these things. So I can see that there's a project file and I can see that there is uh, a geodatabase folder that's created. So inside of here, I'm going to build in a few extra folders. And I would encourage you to do set up the same file structure for any project that you ever work on. So I'm going to have a folder that's called Shape for any shape files that I download or, or bring in. I'm going to grab a folder that's called Raster. Okay, for any rasters that we bring in, I'm going to uh, create another folder that I'll call workspace. And my workspace folder is one that's just there if I need space for something that I don't want to hang on to permanently. And so for saving room on the computer, I'll probably delete it later or can at least empty the folder out. And then finally, I'll create a folder called PDF in which uh, any exported maps I could save to that folder. Now, what this creates is a file structure that I think you can organize your, your data into and do that consistently project after project, and it'll save you, save you a lot of time. So we're going to hang on to this, um, and I'm just going to minimize this out. Well, and you know, and you know what? I'm going to grab while we're at it. I'm going to open this back up, and I'm going to bring in an image into Raster. Okay, so I have an image that I'm going to copy uh, from another. This is a an old image of the Salt Lake Valley, a topo map, and I'm going to paste it into my raster folder because all images are, in essence, rasters. Okay, so with my file structure set up, I'm going to close that out and I am here in my new project and let's just see what we see so coming into the folders 
all of the folders that I've worked with are up to date and placed inside of my project folder. And I, I just like having everything bound into a one project. I think that's one of the big improvements on ArcGIS Pro uh, over ArcMap is just the basic file structure that comes along with this. Okay, now we want to bring in this image okay, of the Salt Lake Valley and georeference it, so give it a location. So what I'm going to do first is just start a new map. So within the project, I come over and from the Insert tab, I click New Map. And instantly this uh, base map's already put onto here. One thing I'm going to do before we start is I'm going to right click on Map, come into Properties, and check my units. Now, first off, map units are meters. I think if I change my coordinate system first, um, I might have different map units, and, and I kind of want to know what those are. So I'm going to come down, and for this map, not always will it be the same for every map you do, but I'm going to get us a coordinate system of WGS84. I click on that. Let me just come back to map really quick, and let's just look at the map units are now degrees, okay, and display units are decimal degrees. And so what that means is down at the bottom of the screen, I'll see decimal degrees. So right now we're at 94, let's see right down here, we're at 97.67 degrees west, uh, 10.69 uh, degrees north. And so um, those are the display units. The map units is actually what the software like thinks in. Okay, so it's thinking in degrees uh, rather than meters now. And I have this as my projection and coordinate system. Um, now we wanted to bring in that image and actually place it where it belongs. So I'm going to come into this raster folder where the image is located and just drag that out onto the screen. And let's see where it ends up. Now here in my contents pane I should soon see uh, not only this topographic base map, but there we go. Here's like our image. And again, for any like visible image, you'll see red, green, and blue. Now, let's just look at where it's at. I'm going to right click and go zoom to layer. And you can see that the corner of this image is like right at zero, zero in terms of latitude and longitude. And what it does is um, it assumes that each pixel of the image is one map unit, which in this case would be one degree. Okay, now that's not what it, we hope. I can right click on this, look at the properties, and kind of see the size of it. Okay, and here's the raster information, and here's the number of columns and rows of pixels that we have. So if it thinks one degree is one pixel, let's see where the corner is at. I come down to the corner, and if I look down at the bottom of the screen, yeah, 4,700 and 5,900. It's taking every pixel as, as a degree. Now what we want to do is we want to put... Utah Lake where Utah Lake belongs, okay, and so forth, um, so that we can have this image actually be placed in a real place where it belongs. Now, where this is a topo map, I can zoom into these corners, and we have latitude and longitude on each corner. Okay, so here's 111 degrees west, 41 degrees north, and so forth. Um, so let's see what we do to georeference. Anytime you bring in a raster or an image, you'll see, and when we have it highlighted in our contents pane, you'll see this imagery tab. And if I click on imagery, um, you'll also see a few tools related to that imagery. And one of those tools is georeference. Now if I click on georeference, we start with the georeference tab. And so it's kind of working us into this. Um, now. Uh, what you do to georeference is you first take points on the image and select them with your mouse and then you can either input the true coordinates, map coordinates of that point or you can select the point on the map. I think we'll do it both ways. So let's try it. 
first thing I'll do is I'll come up to this add control points and again remember you always go to the image first and then to the real map so I come to the image and I'm gonna try and get as good as I can and click a point now I could now go to the map and try and find the same location but I can also come and I'm going to right click and this allows me to actually put in values now the values that we have here X is going to be longitude I'm going to go negative 112 and Y will be latitude and we're at 41 and I'm going to click OK. Now what has that done? It's moved that point to the real coordinates of 41 and 112 but it hasn't like scaled anything down. So I'm, now I'm going to come in and zoom into this 111 and 41 and click again on the image first and then I'm going to put in real map units. So again for X we're negative 111 and for Y we are 41 and I click OK. Now I'm like lost over here in white space so I'm going to come and right click and let's just zoom to layer again and see where we're at now things are starting to look about right at least to Willis nearby okay so we can see where where that's at now I only have two points so far and so I think we've we squoze the image a little bit but it's probably still stretched a little bit I'm gonna come down onto this point here and do the same process that we've done so I'm going to click and then right click over into space and put in the real value. So here we're negative 112 and 40. I do that, it's going to pull this up. Again, it's starting to look a little bit more how it should. Now with three points, um, Pro can make that image hit exactly the three points that you want. If I do a fourth point, it's going to have to give away some of the uh, information that we put in for the other three. And let me just show you that. Well, actually, before I do that, let me open up the control point table. Okay, the control point table kind of gives you information on each of these points. And if you ever make a mistake on one of these points, this is a good place to come in, uh, check one of these, and actually delete it. Okay, or oh, there's delete all. I guess if I check just one of them, I could delete just one of them. Okay, so just row by row. Now, um, over here on this far column is a column called residual, and that shows you how far off the point you chose is from the point that you want it to be. And right now, the residuals are zero, meaning they are dead on. Okay, and it's, the residual is related to a mathematical formula um, that can be computed once you start to add more data. Now if I come in to here and add a fourth point, let me just go back to my georeference, make sure I'm still on add control points. I'm going to come in, add a fourth point to 111.40. Now I'm going to right click, do the target, negative 111 and 40. It's really close. But all of a sudden you see, and it shifted a little bit, but we see a red and a green target. Meaning where I select it on the map and where I want it in real life is not the same thing. And all of a sudden we have residual values, meaning we're not perfectly lined up to all the points that we chose. And that's just a natural consequence of choosing four points, um, at least with this transformation. Now, if I was to do a different transformation, I could do more than, more than three points. So what's a transformation? Well, that's what you see on this little drop-down box. Um, with a first-order polynomial, you need at least three points. If I wanted to do a second order, I'd need at least six points. Third order, ten points. Now I'm just going to keep selecting a few points and then we'll maybe change our transformation. So another way to do this besides like putting in the target coordinates is to select a location on the map and then to try and select it on the image or on the, the real digital map. 
So I'm just going to kind of toggle on and off and look for a few places that I see in common. Okay, so I think I'm going to come in and look at where the Spanish Fork River comes in to Utah Lake. And maybe I'll make a control point. Or maybe I'll use Lincoln Point, okay, over here on the West Mountain. So let me turn on the image. And I'm going to come out and select a point. Turn the image off and now select the target point. Okay, now I've added another a uh, fifth point. Okay, and my residuals are actually growing. Okay, let's see. Let's look at where the Provo River plugs into Utah Lake. Or maybe we should do one that's like farther out. Let's come up to here and, and see if we can uh, do something where Silver Creek and these two streams come together. Okay, so I see the two streams coming together here. And then I think that equivalent point is right there. Now I have six points. My residuals have grown. Okay, as you watch it down here in the, in the block. Um, let's go ahead and just look at the map and see how close we are. And I'm just going to kind of zoom in here. And here's kind of a cool tool. If you go to the Appearance tab, there's the swipe tool. And I can just kind of swipe back and forth between these different rasters and see how things line up. Now, based off how old this map is, uh, I, I can expect there's going to be some things that are just different. Um, but hopefully we get pretty close. But just the shape of the Jordan River tells me we're going to be different no matter what we do. Okay, but you can kind of come through and see, and I wonder if that little pond right here should be placed over more. Uh, Camus is relatively in the right spot. Heber kind of closed. Midway's a little bit off. Um, so let's go back to georeference. Now, we're on a first order transformation. Let's try a second order. We've got six points. With a second order with six points, the residuals are back to zero, and you can see that it's kind of rotated things a little bit. But I'll tell you, I don't think that helped. <laughs> yeah, I think that made it worse, at least for where we're viewing from. Oh, and look at how it is as we zoom out with that sixth order transformation. I'm going to go back to the first order and let the map deform. And honestly, as I look at this, I'm going to get rid of that last point. So let me come in to row six and delete that point. I think we we're better off without it. Okay, so um, now we have an image and maybe we get it to a point that we say, hey, that's, that's good enough. Uh, we like how things are. We feel good about the residuals. Hopefully you can keep these relatively small, but also hopefully things line up well for you on the map. Now once you've done this, you can come in and save this file. Now what, you, what happens when you click save is this image file that we're looking at on the map will now adopt uh, coordinates. Or you can do save as new, and what that'll do is it'll create an image file that has coordinates, and the image file that's in our folder won't have coordinates. I feel fine with just having it adopt those coordinates, so I'm just going to click save. And now this image has a place and a home. And so if I was to drag it into any other map, it would drag in into the correct place. So I feel pretty good about how we've geo-referenced, and, and that's just the start of geo-referencing. 
the next thing that we want to do is we're going to try and digitize a few things inside of here. Okay, so um, one thing I think would be fun to digitize is uh, a few of these railroad lines. So we've got one that goes up to Alta, okay, a little mining area. Silver City up here in Big Cottonwood Canyon. Um, here's Park City, another railway that comes down. Let's just digitize some of these railways that maybe don't exist anymore. So again, how do you digitize? Well, first thing you're going to do is come into your geo ref or geo database. Okay, that's a place where you can create stuff, create new files. Um, so I'm going to right click on this and do new, and I'm going to come in and do a new feature class. Okay, a feature class and a shape file are pretty much the same thing. Just remember, feature classes are saved inside of geodatabases, where shape files are saved inside of regular folders. Uh, saving things as feature classes and saving them in geodatabases is actually like really efficient in terms of like file space. So I think we're doing a good thing with what we've what we've got going here. All right, first I'm going to give this a name. So feature class name. Let's go ahead and call this um, old rails and I'm just going to put a year of 1860 because that dates our map. The geometry type, we're going to do a polyline. Uh, let's see, coordinate system, I'm going to do the drop down. Now you can select a coordinate system by clicking the globe or you can just do that of the current map. Since we set the map to a current coordinate system at the beginning, I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm going to leave the feature class alias alone. And now I'm going to click uh, Run, and that will create the new file. Okay, and it does take just a, a little bit to get that completely created. Okay, now, so this is geoprocessing step. Now if I was to create it again, it's telling me the name's already taken. Let's go back and I'm actually going to come down and let's bring up the catalog pane and you can see now inside of my geo database there's this old rails okay that's a line type so how do you like create or digitize well the first thing you're going to do is come into the edit tab okay so we have the edit tab and then there's this create button when you select the create button it's going to bring up anything that's like a Creatable file, and you can select what one you want to build onto. We want to build onto old rails, and currently it's the only option available to us. So we select it, and then it brings up a couple different options like tracing, uh, or like just digitizing a line, or doing a perpendicular line or right angle line. So I'm going to come in and just do some straight lines on some of these old rails, like this one that comes. Uh, from Alta. Now, um, anytime I digitize something, I want to do it very carefully. And, and for this demo, I'm probably going a little faster than I normally would. I probably would zoom in just a little bit more to make sure that I was actually right in line with um, the true line itself. I'm just going to work my way up the canyon, digitizing as we go. Up to Alta, where I'll stop the rail line. And I double click, and this now highlights itself. Now, maybe I'm zooming in here, and I look at how the line truly is, and I actually don't really like it. I think ah, I should have done a little bit better job. Do I have to redo it? Well, not really. Okay. Um, now I can right click and say finish on this. Not right click. Click on the check mark. 
Um, but this this looks pretty good. But maybe I look at it and I think, okay, I can do a little bit better than that. I'm going to come into modify. And when I have modify, first thing that you can modify is reshape by clicking the vertices. And then I can like anywhere I drop to click, I can actually move that point to a better spot. And the line will look a little bit better. The other thing that I could do is this reshape tool. And I think this one is kind of cool. Because the first thing that you have to do is you just have to cross over uh, with a line. Oh, excuse me. Let me select what we want to do. You just have to cross over and then do your new points. And when you get it right, cross over again and it'll cut out uh, where you cross. And so it's a good way to like modify things. So there's just a couple little uh, modification tools for you. Now, once I feel good about this railway, I'm going to click Save. Now, maybe before I do that, I want to come in and like uh, do the railway that goes up to Silver City and how it comes down. Okay. And oh, maybe there's not one. Maybe it's just a road that goes up there. Or maybe I want to show this rail that goes past West Jordan kind of out to the out west. And so I could do other lines, or if I was doing polygon type, I could do other polygons. Okay, but once I have that ready and feel good about it, I can click Save, and it says, do you want to save edits? You bet. And now this is written into our geo database. It's, it's a real file. We could pull it into another map. We've created it. Um, and we've created it in a coordinate system that's valid, uh, and so it knows where it's at. Okay, so there's just digitizing. Maybe before I uh, stop this video, um, let me just show you just a couple other things we could do with digitizing. So again, maybe if I want a polygon type, just remember you can create a new feature class. Give something a name, and let's just name this um, Old Boundaries, and I'm going to do 1860. I'm going to leave it as Polygon Type, and again, take the coordinate system as the current one on the map, and run this. Now, that's not very descriptive on like what I'm actually trying to digitize or do, uh, but let's just try it out. Okay, once it's created, I'm going to come in and let's go to the Edit tab, Create. And this time, you can see both things that we've created. I could click on Old Rails and just start doing more rails, or I can do this Old Boundaries. And I'm going to come in and let's just sketch out the six city blocks of Heber City. Now, I just right-clicked. One thing that you can do when you right click is you can specify like a direction. You can go like perpendicular to some direction. I can do like a distance, okay? Um, I can like give it, uh, or I can choose perpendicular to something else. Um, I can kind of give it constraints like that. And we'll look at that later on, but I just wanted to show you that as you edit, if you right click, you have like some other options inside of here. Now, um, without getting into those too much. I'm just going to come through and quickly digitize these. And there's Heber City. And let me do Midway, but let me just show you what I just barely did. So let me go parallel. I'm going to go parallel to... Oh, actually, maybe I can't do that yet. Let me escape out of that. And let me just save what we've done. So while well, it's saving and thinking about that,
Now let me do boundaries again. And clear the selection. And this time I'm going to right click. I'm going to go parallel to the direction. Okay. I guess it has to be uh, a different entity. So let me just close off this digitization. And there's Midway. Okay. And so I can then save that and um, save all edits. And I've just done some georeferencing and digitizing. Okay. And so again, I hope this video is helpful as you continue to work on, on the assignment and on your projects. Please reach out to me if you have any questions.